Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and look at the business rule editor. So if you remember the last video, we talked about the business process flow editor. I figured it might be a good idea just from a continuation standpoint, just to expand on that and look at the business rule editor. Now, in theory, yes, they're very similar. They're, they're pretty much the exact same editor, but obviously it's a business rule. So there's a different actions and items that are associated with that. And so I figure we'll just take a quick look at what are the subtle differences between the two and what are the things that you can do that are business rule specific. So let's just go ahead and consume this in the system. So I'm going to go into settings and customize the system. And then I'll go ahead and expand the entity that I want to work with, which in this case will be the account entity. And I'll click on business rules at an entity level. And then I'll go ahead and just create my new business rule like I've always done in the past. Now, remember that depending upon how you create the business rule, fundamentally, they're still the same thing. I still have my scope settings the same. So if I go into scope, I can still see that I can set the business rule at a form level. I can set it at an all forms level, or I can set it at an entity level to make it more server based. The other thing to remember is because I went in through the entity, so I went in through business rules, it's going to set it to an all form business rule by default. Had I gone in at a form level, it would have obviously set it at a singular form level. So the, the concepts in regards to what you're doing from a business rule design standpoint are the same. They've just now been transferred over into that new editor that we saw very similar with the mobile task flows as well as the business process flows. Now, for example, if I click on my condition, just like we've done in the past, I can give this a name. So we'll just go ahead this, uh, give this a name, says check relationship. Then I'll go ahead and specify obviously the entity. Same type of situation that we did last time. So now I can come in here from a rule perspective and I can determine what I wanna do in this particular scenario. Now you'll notice that from a source standpoint, I do have the ability just like we have in the past to do it either at an entity level or at a business process level. When I choose at a business process level, then I have the ability when I go down to do it at a process name at a process level based upon the process. So this business process is what we're checking to see if this business process has been applied, or I can look at kind of a stage category scenario and then look to see what stage we're in. And I can look at it at an active stage level or at a selected stage level. So if you're looking to execute this information on one or more types of situations, you can specify what you want to do within those items. Now, in this case, if I'm working just with the relationship type option here, I'm going to set this back into a entity level. So I'll go into the field. Um, we'll specify the relationship type field. And we'll say if the relationship type equals customer, then what do we want to do? So now if I go back into my conditions or I go back into my components, now you'll see that I have a lot of the same type of options that I've had available in the past. I could set visibility, so I could drag visibility over into here. It would pull up my properties for my option where I could toggle visibility on a specific field if I wanted to based upon availability or items that I wanted to go through. Um, I could also go in and we'll just do that here. So we'll just say we're going to make the account number field visible by default. And then otherwise, I could go back into my components and I could specify what I want to do otherwise, just like we did very similarly with the business rules. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different here. I'm going to delete these options out. And I'm just going to show you this new one that I kind of that I that I get a kick out of and this is called recommendation. So Let's just say, for example, if somebody chooses a relationship type of customer, maybe we want to make a recommendation to them based upon how they should fill in information in another field. That's in essence what this recommendation field allows us to do. So now I could basically specify what field I want to make the recommendation on. We're just going to say recommend recommend industry. So we're going to say we're going to make a recommendation on the industry field. So I'm going to click on industry. What do I want to call this? So 
So my title, I'm just going to, basically what's going to happen is you're going to get kind of a little notification icon that's going to pop up next to a specific field on the form. When you click on that notification option, it's going to pop up a message that says, this is what I'm recommending that you do. So in this case, if I go ahead and I, and I look at it, it's going to recommend that we set this field to this value. So what is the value? So now if I go into the recommendation, these recommendations actually have actions associated with them. And so when you click on the action, now you can go ahead and define what specific item you want to do within that item. So in this case, if I'm making a recommendation on the industry field, it would make sense that I would want to fill information into the industry field. So now I could go into the industry field here. I could select the item that I want for the industry, and I could set that particular industry to you know whatever item I want to work with. We'll just save financial for, for, for today's purposes. And so then I'll hit apply. So now in this situation, what's going to end up happening is from a recommendation standpoint, when it pops up the recommendation, I can make it, it will make my recommendation. So I can click on my, my action. It shows me what it's going to recommend within this situation. So it's going to recommend setting this to financial. So I'll make this a display name of financial and I'll apply it to save my changes. And then my recommendation, we're going to basically resave this again quick because I didn't save it the first time. That was my fault. So I'm going to save my recommendation. I'll have my details associated with that recommendation. Now I can go ahead and I can validate this or I could come up with another condition to define what I want to do if I wanted to have an alternating condition. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to validate this and this will just go out and make sure that everything looks okay. Now that everything looks okay, now I could go ahead and save and activate this. And so let's go ahead and let's do that here real quick. So now that I have it activated, I'm going to go ahead and go back into my system. I'll go into sales and accounts, open up a new account. Sample account. Now I'll go to my relationship type field. I'll choose customer. And now there's that recommendation. When I hover over the recommendation and I click on it, it says, here's what we recommend that you apply, that you set this value to. When I hit apply, it then goes down into the value that we've uh, suggested. And now I can select it. Now I don't have to, it's just a recommendation. So this is just kind of almost like your, your, your error messages. It just says, here's the recommendation. You could choose to select the recommendation or not. Otherwise you can go ahead and do something else. So this gives you just kind of a nice different scenario in regards to being able to work with it. So this is one of the, the new features specifically that I've done quite a bit with that I've played with. It's just really cool. So I would highly recommend kind of working through it. So that's going to do it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, I would definitely take some time and at the very least play with the recommendation stuff. It's really cool. I think you guys will enjoy it quite a bit. So again, for all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek saying thanks for watching, everybody. Take care and have a good one.